Well, lots happened since the last podcast. Biden and Obama just started World War III with Iran, and we're going to talk about that. But, you know, I was – I did a live stream on YouTube Saturday morning from Starbucks, and I was telling people – Something and I, I got a lot of feedback about this, and and I, I don't think people thought about it in quite this way till I pointed it out. But the the not just Biden and Obama, because remember Obama's running the show. It's not just Biden and Obama. The entire permanent Washington class of the Uniparty are done with the American people. There's nothing they do to help us. Okay, and what they're really concerned about is getting control of the country back away from Trump, away from MAGA. And that's what all these illegals are being brought here for nonstop, every minute of every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't even take off for Christmas or Easter or anything else. And, you know, so if if you look at Biden and these people that are running the country right now that are working very hard to try to stop Trump Mm – from winning re-election and wonder why is this happening? Why is that happening? They don't care about you. They, they're they upset with us. They feel betrayed by the American people because we support Trump. And that's that's the reality of it. So gas prices through the roof, they're going to go higher now because Iran, OPEC nations are involved in this third world war. Biden, Obama just started, you know, groceries up 40%, you know, don't look for any help from the permanent Washington and the permanent Washington class of the Republican establishment too, right? And that's that's just something you've got to accept. Now, this thing with World War III, you know, you've noticed um, all this anti-Semitism and uh, against Israel that's been going on in the country since those attacks in October, which was the most barbaric attack that I've ever seen on a, on a country. And you even have people you think see the world partly straight, like Candace Owens and uh, Mark Dice. Uh, that Mark Dice is the one that really surprised me, that they don't support Israel. And they view Israel, supporting Israel, the same as supporting Ukraine. So this, this Obama move from when he was president that started this mass anti-Semitic brainwashing has even gotten into the heads of Conservatives, some of the conservatives like Candace Owens, um, this anti is. By the way, for those of you that say they're not anti-Semitic, they just don't support Zion or whatever. That's anti-Semitic. Okay, Israel's the Jewish state, and Israel was established in 1948 because of the Holocaust. The Nazis, Hitler was trying to wipe out Jews from humanity. No country would take them in, not even the United States. You know, Roosevelt turned Jews away. Many of them went back to Europe to die in camps. So Israel was established so Jews had a safe place to go so they wouldn't be exterminated like in the Holocaust. So that's the purpose of Israel. So if you don't support Israel and Israel's right to exist, you're supporting anti-Semitism, whether you know it or not. Um, But I'm very surprised when I – Mark Dice, I like Mark Dice. He's on YouTube. And Mark Dice doesn't even think we should be involved uh, with with support of Israel. So um, this this – Attack that happened on Israel, and we don't know if if, if it's over. We don't know what's going to happen here. Um, it's everything's still unfolding. Um, this this Iranian attack on Israel that has started the Third World War. Possibly, you got to understand we are paying for that. Obama, remember, gave all that cash. Brian, we're funding all of Biden these gave them more exactly. We're giving the Ukraine's money. We gave Iran money. Mm-hmm. We are funding. All of this, our taxpayer dollars, yeah. is and and there's nothing. The only thing we do about it is is try to get Trump back in office to stop and it. And I all. don't understand how liberals can support this guy, well, Biden, and what's or anyone. Going on. I mean, yeah. I, well, yeah. you know, people will rationalize things um, to to fit their personal opinion and their personal yeah. agenda on stuff. So, I I, I don't. I'd love well, to hear people call in your radio show this week. That are liberal and rationalize how this is yeah. a good thing, um, and how they don't understand and, that that if Trump was there, then none of this would be happening. And, and, and those of you that are listening that aren't voting for Trump in November, what what are you thinking? I mean, what's the matter with you? You know, um, 
I, and I want to address something th- that I got some feedback from too on my YouTube live stream from Saturday. And I don't always address these kind of things, but I'm going to address this. I heard from uh, when I did this live stream Saturday, I was sitting out in front of a, of a Starbucks. And there's a couple things I want to talk about with this. Some, uh, one is more minor. People tell me it's woke. It's woke. You shouldn't drink their coffee. What major corporation is not woke? Um, even Chick-fil-A um, does stuff with gay activists now, okay? Just because they're closed on Sunday don't mean they ain't gone woke. You know, if you go through life refusing to buy anything or do business with any major corporation or chain that's not woke, you're not going to do business with anyone. You're going to sit in your house. You're going to be Amish, okay? You're going to be on a self-sustaining farm. And I know people will say, I grow my own coffee. I ain't got time for all that stuff, okay? So that's the, that's the one thing. That's just, I mean, you don't think, where, where are you going to go and get food and coffee from a business that does not do stuff with, Here's how I see with uh, any of these uh, diversity inclusion people or any of this other if stuff? If you want to personally boycott a company, that's your right and that's your privilege as an American to do that. But I don't understand people that attack other people for not doing the same thing they do. I don't personally participate in too many boycotts, really. I don't think I ever really have. I like to shop where I like to shop and buy what I want to buy. And I'm not going to let some company's agenda control what I do. I don't really research these things too much because I really don't want to know. But if, like, for example, if I found out a company – was doing something that was really, really against my personal moral beliefs, then I might take issue with that. But like you said, companies, I just don't want to know. Companies are going to do what they Cor- want to do. Corporations, see, here's how it works, Kathy. Cor- corporations, with rare exceptions, corporations play both sides, okay? They give to uh, conservative exactly. things and liberal things. Yeah, Trump did that too. And yeah, Trump um, did that too. Well, yeah, I wouldn't compare him to. Starbucks. Well, he did when he was a citizen, when he wasn't a politician. Well, he he, he donated um, to both. He said he said he had to. He said if I didn't donate to the Democrats, he couldn't get buildings built in New York or California. Right. Well, maybe that's how these companies yeah. feel. They have to make donations to make things but, happen too, to get permits, to get things done. I mean, you know, I mean, that's just the way the world is. So the thing with with me is when I when I go to Starbucks, and by the way, I'm not justifying my coffee drinking. I mean, because I drink Starbucks coffee, I'm not mad. I mean, these people, you know, I usually don't comment on things so petty, but I, I just am for this. Um, I drink a lot of coffee. I need coffee to go, okay? I get, I drink four shots of espresso in the morning. You tell me another place that I can get four shots of espresso for under $5 every morning that's available at 5 a.m. Yeah, that you could drive to. That, I'll, that I will go there and not go to Starbucks, but that place does not exist. No. Now, the, uh, there's I'll, nowhere else open around here. There's, there's one other criticism I got um, from my YouTube live stream that I'm going to comment on too. Um, when I did that stream, I was just just pissed. You know, at what Biden and the Democrats in the Uniparty are doing. This country is under attack, okay? This country is under attack from our southern border. It's mostly Latin American people. I know there's people from other countries, but it's mostly – basically what they're doing is they're transporting South America to the United States. They have brought in 10 10- million illegals since Biden has been in office. They and that's like an, news a, that's an 10 million. And that's their official number. You know, it's much more than that. Well, you had said to, to me this morning, which was true. You said they, they're done with us and they can't get us to go along with what they want to do. So they're bringing in people that will agree with them. Correct. That's and exactly vote for them. what they're and, doing. And, and these that's are people exactly what from they're third doing. world countries <laughs> Um, and, and they come here, they're used to that type of life. They're used to the government telling them what to do. And they, uh, they see it, you know, they just have a different mindset and that's what they're doing. They're They're changing the mindset of the country. And what, and what the Uniparty is trying to do, the Democrats for years and years and years have been trying to destroy the middle class because they do not understand why the middle class votes Republican. They've given up trying to win people over. You know, you see these polls 
that President Trump is pulling higher among black men and women than he's ever than, than any Republican since Eisenhower. You see polls like that every day, different groups that are leaning towards Trump that typically don't the youth vote, right? The the Uniparty, they they're done with they they're done with American blacks, American women, American gays. Um, what other groups are there? The American youth, they're done with all of us, okay? Senior citizens, everyone in between like us, they're done with all of the American people. They're bringing in a new population. It's a peasant population from South America. And I, I don't want to hear stuff, oh, well, there's Chinese coming. Yeah, I know, but it, it's mostly South Americans. They're bringing in a peasant class of people that are, and many of them, a huge chunk of them, are coming from villages that don't have running water or electricity in their homes, okay? They're bringing them to America, and they're retired. It used to be like prior to Trump coming down the escalator. What Democrats would run on would be scare tactics. Like with seniors, they would say, if you vote Republican, you're going to lose your Social Security. Mm -hmm. They're done with all that. What, well, it's not what, working. What it's no, not effective. That's it, the problem. They've given up. They're not even trying. So what they're doing is they're moving these really tens of millions. I think the number is probably 16 to 20 million, not 10. I think that's you know a conservative number. They're bringing these people here, and they're setting them up to be retired. And what I was, uh, was talking about, and as I was talking about this on this live stream, Saturday morning I was getting angry thinking about it, right? Those of you that are retired and on Social Security, okay? Uh, and not everybody on Social Security has a pension or retirement plan or other things. A lot of people retire on Social Security, and that's fine for them. They got a house. They get by. If you are a senior citizen in this country and you are retired and you don't have a pension or some big financial thing, you know, and you're living on a fixed income, you worked your entire life in this country. You are getting much less than these so-called newcomers, these illegals that they're bringing here. They come here. These illegals, they come here. They set them up with a couple thousand dollars a month, every month, mm -hmm. in cash that they're giving to them on, like, debit cards. They give them the EBT, which they fill that up every month. They give them free housing, right? Right. They haven't paid anything into the system. They're getting two, three, maybe four times what the majority of our retired senior citizens are getting in, in, in this country. And I, and I was thinking about my, my own situation. Um, my birthday's coming up in uh, a week, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my birthday's in a week. And I have been working pretty much full time like most everybody else. This is nothing, you know, I'm nothing special with this. But I've been working pretty much full time since I was in high school, since I was 16. So I've been working when my birthday comes around. I will have been working full time pretty much for like 30, what is that, like 38 yeah. years? 38 years. Okay. Think of, and I, I'm not complaining. I love working. I got a great career. I love what I do. And many of you out there have been working longer than me. Many of you are retired and have worked as long or as long as I have. And you see these people that don't even have a legal right to be here are being brought here by the Uniparty, and they're being set up with a complete retirement plan, a complete retirement plan. Some of them are living in luxury hotels in New York City. Think about that. They also give them cell phones. You know, this was a bizarre thing. They, they um, in New York, they stopped giving them food and are giving them the, the um the debit cards charged up every month because Mayor Ave says, well, they don't like the food. Well, that's tough. You know, there's a food bank <clears throat> down the street from our house. Okay, it's at a church. There's a church down the street from our house. And every Saturday, mm -hmm. they have a big food drive. And on Saturday mornings, when I, when I leave the house in the mornings, I drive by that church. <clears throat> and I've noticed in the last year, more than ever, the, the cars that I see lining up are like – expensive luxury cars. I mean, they're not like mm. poor, these are working people and they're in a situation, not because they bought cars they couldn't afford or lived a lifestyle above their means. Inflation has hit so hard 
that people that have done everything right in their life have been financially responsible, Mm -hmm. are struggling financially because prices of everything are are going up. Now, if you're one of these newcomers, oh, somebody else said, don't call them newcomers. I mean, it's called sarcasm. Okay, you know, what are you, you know, snowflake? You know, there's so-called newcomer illegals that are here. They don't worry about the inflation, right? Because they, they have money coming in every month that they don't work for. It's there every month. It's more than your Social Security, those of you that are retired on Social Security. They, this doesn't affect them. Plus, they haven't paid anything into the, into the system. So, you know, I, I think I, I was very angry the more I talk about it. And I think you guys are probably angry, too. And if you are not voting for Trump in November, he's going to be the nominee. Ask yourself this question. What has Joe Biden done? One thing that has benefited the American people, and I don't mean the South American people. I mean the American people as in citizens of the United States. One thing that he's done that has benefited the people of the United States that are here legally. Well, the people that call your show or call in whenever you ask them a question like, why don't you like Trump? I always, and they never give an answer that has to do with policy or anything he's done. It's just, he's a racist. He's a bigot. He's, that's all they say. Mean tweets. And how do you get through to people like that, that, you know, tap that are, that, that are brainwashed to believe this? Because I have seen people that kind of wake up to it. Um, I saw this video of this girl who, uh, or she put on Twitter or something where she hated Trump, hated Trump. And then she like went to a rally. Um, a friend took her or something and she met a bunch of people and she was just like, wow, I've been totally lied to. Like I, you know, I, she woke up out of, out of her Trump hating coma. How do you get through to people? Because there are a lot of people that hate Trump still. I know there's more people that love him now, but yeah. if you go on Twitter and stuff, there's a lot of people and a lot of men too, which is surprising. And the things they say about him, like for instance, Bill Maher interviewed that Jack Reacher guy who's a big anti-Christian. I was shocked to hear that. A-hole, yeah. okay? I was shocked. Um, and he said that Trump's a rapist, Trump's a criminal, This that the, the guy from Jack Reacher, this big, tall, good-looking guy, big alpha male guy. Trump's this, he's a bigot, he's a rapist, he's a, he believes everything. Of course, Bill Maher agrees with him because Bill Maher hates Trump too. They believe everything they've heard through the media. It doesn't bother him that there's wars going on all over the world now, that we're funding wars, that we're in the profiteering business now, that yeah. our taxpayers, pair dollars are going to funding illegals and what all you talked about. No, that's not what bothers him. What bothers him is just Trump hate. I hate Trump. I hate Trump. None of this stuff is the E. Jean Carroll case does not prove that Trump raped her or anything. He, didn't rape he had to pay, which he we know he didn't. He had to pay her money for defamation. That's what that big chunk of money was from because he said something about her. But anyway, that doesn't prove anything. And you had a judge who was obviously a Trump hater too. But how do you convince somebody like that, like the Jack Reacher guy, who just absolutely hates Trump so much and believes all of those lies and is willing to vote for Biden, even though the whole world is on fire and falling apart in his mind, that's better than Trump. Even if Trump, even if the guy knew, okay, if I vote for Trump, he'll, all these wars are going to stop, but I'm still going to vote for Biden because Trump's just not nice. I don't understand how these people process this. This Jack Reacher guy, uh, I was just, starting to watch the the latest season of Jack Reacher. It, it's a few months yeah, old. Yeah, see, I'll boycott and shows like that. I'm not going to watch it no. anymore. Uh, he's now, very anti-Christian. You know, yeah, I'm not going to watch it anymore. I was very surprised because I, I saw the first season of Jack Reacher, and uh, I don't remember it too much, but it was I, I thought it was good. I watched the whole thing. And I've seen him on some interviews, and he seemed all right. And then all of a sudden, he comes out like this this demon, just saying terrible things. And I'll tell you, it was stupid because, you know, this yeah. Jack Reacher actor whose name I, I can't remember. It's not I'm, important. I'm we don't, you know, but he he just has recently found this great success with Jack Reacher. And he's told at least half of his. Alan Richson. Yeah, Alan Rich, Richardson or Richson, Richson, whatever it is. We, Jack, the Jack Reacher guy, I think, is he's better. He's 41 and never been married, by the way. Really? Which might tell you something. Really? Yeah. Why he hates Trump. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. 
Um, but this this um, Jack, oh, no, I'm wrong. He's married. He's I married. thought he was because yeah, I've seen married. him talk he's about this. Got three this. sons. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was. He's married. from Florida. What part? Let's see. He lived for years in his native yeah. Florida with his wife Catherine and their three sons. Um, Is that his Wikipedia? Go to early life. It'll tell you where he was raised and born. But but let me just let me finish this on he him. He says he's a Christian. He, um, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You know, here he is. He has just found like success with this show. Yeah. Right. And then he goes out and tells at least half, really more than half, probably at least of the American audience, that he hates them and that you're these evil things. I'll never. I will not finish that second season, no, and I won't watch that show again. And you know what? I won't watch anything else he's in. That's a little different than my coffee. It's a little easier to do. See, that's I do get that way with actors. Yeah. I will not watch if an actor's really vocally political mm-hmm. i will not watch their stuff it really aggravates me like george clooney i won't watch any of his stuff because he's he's he bashes america all the time and matt damon i stopped watching his stuff too and he even talked about that he said uh he's another one who's tr- i think changed his mind he said he regrets getting political and he did a movie where he had to live amongst a bunch of Trump supporters. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was like with an they work they worked like a, a really? something in in the middle of America. And he lived with people and did this film. And he talked about it. And he said these people were all Trump supporters. And he said they were good people. They took me into their homes. Mm-hmm. They made me dinner, and we talked. And he said, you know, he said it was totally different than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. And they're not how the media characterizes them at all. So I think Matt Damon has woken up. But I get that with the, anybody who bashes Trump, I don't like. But anybody who bashes Christians, I really don't like. And I know I talk about Bill Maher. I don't watch Bill Maher's show, but I do see clips on Daily Mail, which one I want to play, which was absolutely abhorrent, what he said about abortion. We'll play abortion. that in the next It was absolutely sickening, what he said about abortion. I mean, I couldn't believe. I'll play that in one fact, in the next the segment, the audience Kathy. was like stunned into silence. Yeah, I have a it queued It shows up. you the kind of man he is. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in the next segment, and you won't want to miss that. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's supr- shocking. I'm surprised this aired because the audience reaction was so negative. It's taped. It wasn't live. They did not have to air that. Now, I want to, and we'll play it in the next segment. Uh, I want to tell you guys, if you'd like to support the program, a great way to do that is to go to MyPillow.com and buy something with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. When you do that, you support all of my content, the podcast, my YouTube channel, the radio show. There's huge specials going on site-wide. You can use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, on all the specials at MyPillow.com. There's also free shipping on orders over $75. So, you know, I talk about what I consider to be the must-haves and my favorites. And my, I think that if I could only have one my pillow product, we've got so many of them. But if I could only have one, I think it would be the mattress topper, which is as much as 50% mm. off right now. Because that mattress topper it, it is nice. turns your entire bed into a big my pillow, And um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It comes in every mattress size. If you have a mattress that's lumpy, bumpy, worn out leaning on one side, you know, or you think you need a new mattress, get a MyPillow mattress topper. Mattresses are expensive, but the mattress topper is not. You can get it for as much as 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. A good thing also would be if you have kids going off to college, like my nephew's going to FSU, which is where I went. My sister went there, and now her son's going there. Mm-hmm. And uh, living in the dorm, the beds are not the best. I can tell you oh, from yeah. personal experience the, the mattresses are almost like probably what they have in prison. Yeah. Um, so that would be a good gift if you if you have um, a graduate or a bridal shower is also a great idea to give. If you want to give something really nice that's meaningful that somebody's going to actually use other than like a, their fifth toaster or something. If you get like a college kid, what, the three-inch mattress topper, if you have a kid or a niece or a nephew and you send them that, with the pillows and the sheets, they will be all set. Oh, and yeah. they will, every night they'll lay down uh, and they'll be like, oh man, they'll get a great night's sleep mm-hmm. and they'll love it because I'm telling you, those beds in college are not comfortable. So use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E at mypillow.com. All right, we're going to take a break. When we get back, oh boy, you will not want to miss this next segment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this break. 
Teens, are you ready to rise above the challenges of adolescence and embrace your full potential? Then order your copy of Rise Up, Empowering Teens for Success in Today's World. From author Jeffrey Obekway, available on Amazon. Rise Up provides a comprehensive toolkit for teenagers navigating the complexities of life. From academic hurdles to financial literacy, mental health to relationships, Rise Up offers practical insights as well as actionable advice to help teens just like you thrive in today's ever-changing world. With its compassionate approach and real-world guidance, this book is a must-read for teens, parents, educators, and counselors alike. No matter the obstacle, Rise Up inspires readers to overcome challenges, embrace their potential, and achieve success on their own terms. Empower yourself or the teens in your life and order your copy of Rise Up, Empowering Teens for Success in Today's World. From author Jeffrey Obekway. Available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now. Men, are you tired of looking tired? You can turn your tired eyes into a vibrant and refreshed look with a specially formulated under eye cream for men at Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. That's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. This anti-aging formula is designed to repair and protect your eyes against the common signs of aging. Dark circles, puffiness, and those pesky crow's feet gone. With Meditati, you'll say goodbye to those tired eyes and hello to a youthful appearance. It's packed with peptides, vitamins, C, jojoba oil, green tea, CoQ10, and other essential ingredients. This formula will keep your under eyes bright and refreshed. It also keeps your skin hydrated with the highest quality natural and organic ingredients. It's crafted by skincare experts and this non-greasy, lightweight formula absorbs quickly and efficiently nourishing the skin around your eyes. So if you're tired of puffiness and wrinkles, go right now to Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. That's M-E-D-I-T-A-T-I. Don't miss out on this chance to give your eyes the care they deserve because you and your eyes deserve it. Amazon.com slash shops slash Meditati. Are you a parent of a daughter? Then boy, do I ever have a book that I want to tell you about. But Dad, I Love Him from author Kevin Boyle. It's loved by readers from around the globe, from places like Britain, Australia, Canada, the U.S., and Germany. Readers have been saying that, but Dad, I Love Him is one of the most captivating and eye-opening books you will ever read. Calling But Dad, I Love Him a book that's rich, insightful, and transformative, and deserving of a place on every woman's bookshelf. If you have a daughter, you are going to want to give her this book. It's a conversation that every parent should have with their daughter about life, love, dating, sex, and relationships. Buy it today, but Dad, I Love Him, from author Kevin Boyle. You can find it on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover edition. But Dad, I Love Him is filled with easy-to-learn, easy-to-use, step-by-step real-world dating, relationship, and communication tips and strategies that will help any daughter of any age have a deep, fulfilling, loving, successful relationship. Order your copy right now but dad i love him from author kevin boyle on amazon you are listening to the brian craig show podcast broadcasting from sunny south florida brian is joined by his wife and co-host kathy follow brian on social media at brian and now brian and kathy so bill maher had pierce morgan on who's just a you know even though he was the celebrity apprentice, he's a monstrous guy. And they're talking about abortion. And, you know, they have it. When I say they, I'm talking about the, you know, all the Trump haters. They have it in their head that abortion is going to cost Trump the election. I don't think it's a big issue. And I think his response is very good. It, it's up to the states, you know, and all this stuff. It's what's being talked about now. But Biden and Obama just started World War Three. Yeah, They'll be, exactly. It, it, It'll this, go on the back burner. Exactly. You know. It, the last couple of weeks, I, I was telling you guys, it's kind of like a election news law because we the the nominees decided we don't have yeah uh, the conventions quite yet. So a lot of there, a lot of the stories that they're pushing are really like filler stories, like the abortion. But anyway, let's play this. So uh, this is Bill Maher's show. He has uh, Pierce Morgan, some other people. This was who, shocking to me. And they're talking about um, abortion. Europe, for example, by comparison, the 60 countries of Europe. Actually, there are many countries in Europe where it's completely illegal to have an abortion. Mm-hmm. Poland, Malta, you know, places like Andorra, you know. So, uh, and if you look at Germany, at France, and countries like that, it can be 10, 12 weeks is the term limit that you're allowed to have an abortion legally. So, 
America is not such an outlier. If it does go to the states, I think a lot of Americans on the left do think that this is somehow a really unique American problem or an issue that only pertains to them in terms of the legality of abortions. Actually, comparative to Europe, it's not massively dissimilar. But the thing that's crazy is at a time when America is facing so many huge geopolitical threats. And, and let me tell you something. When you're talking about American politics, why bring all these foreigners on with these funny the accents? Hell, yeah. Who cares? But Piers is right. Yeah. Yeah. Abortion no, he, is, yeah. is illegal and very restrictive. In, including in Israel, by the and way. And a lot of Americans don't realize that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that are much more conservative if you go to other countries but a lot of people live in this bubble here and they bo they believe the lies that the news tell them yeah. or what they see on TikTok and they don't get outside of that bubble and they don't realize yeah. that that things are much more restrictive in other places. That's right. Now this woman I don't know who she is, it doesn't matter, but after she's done Bill Maher comes in. Um, when there's a huge tech revolution going on where the economy is faced with all kinds of challenges. The idea that you're fighting an election around this issue we're not. Um, seems to be, you know, just strange. Okay. They're, they're trying to make it look We're as not if fighting we are. Around this issue. It's, a, yeah. it's a wag the dog issue. It's yeah. fake. It's, it's a fake it's, issue. Exactly. It's a settled issue. Roe v. Wade was overturned, yeah. and it's, they're trying yeah, to make it an issue. By the way, she's a columnist with the Financial Times. Mm. Back to the 19th century. Well, well, here comes Mark. How do you believe it's murder? You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing, or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they do, the pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder, and it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's eight billion. Wow, he was expecting applause like she got. Now, maybe rewind it again. Let's and keep it out. Let's keep playing gonna, and see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to rewind it now. Now, that, that woman from the, that columnist with the accent, she got an applause. And when he said that, you could tell. I'm going to rewind it. Now, and I'm going to play the whole rest of it uninterrupted. You can tell that he paused for a second for applause that didn't happen. Mm. Because even his liberal audience of fans were sickened by what he says. Let me rewind it, and I'll play the whole thing. It is sickening. Uninterrupted. The part with Marr. I do believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing. Or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women. People who aren't pro-life, they do the pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry. We won't miss you. That's my position on that. What? That's quite a hospital. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not is that not your like position <laughs> if you're pro-choice? Isn't that mainly because you don't like children? I mean, yeah, no, exactly. no. I mean, but if you are, you're, you said you're pro-choice. Mm. That's your position too. Mm. You're wow. He's right about that, though. I, the thing wow. that sickens me is not him agreeing it's murder. He's right about that. It's not that, we're, and, and I wish people would have articulated that part as well as he just did. It's not that we're anti-women, we're anti-killing babies, but the part that's sickening is that he said he's okay with it and that there's too many people in the world anyway, and that part was disturbing. But then when he said to the other two, yeah, I'm sorry, I hit when that he said it. to the other two, mm -hmm. well, if you're pro-choice, you you agree with me. Yeah. And he's right. And they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I am shocked that he acknowledged that abortion is murder. I have never heard a and liberal. And he's okay with it. Ever heard a liberal acknowledge that. So that I commend him. You know, he was raised Catholic and his Catholicism, whether he wants to deny it or not, comes through. And I, I, I applaud him for acknowledging that it's murder. But what's distressing is that he's okay with it. Yeah. And, but, he, he, but then he says to the other liberals, you're okay with it too. So I don't know 
what he was doing there, if he was trying to shame them somehow, or because he didn't get the reaction he wanted, he was looping them into and it. He was looping them in with him. Like, well, you, it was a you save. agree with me. It was you know a lifeline. I mean? like, he, he was doing a lifeline. Yeah, like like he wasn't getting the reaction he wanted. So he said, well, if you're pro-choice, you agree with me yeah. too. Yeah. So it was a lifeline. Very interesting. Well, you know, the thing with, and then he says, well, there's 8 billion people. The the planet is not overcrowded. I mean, if you live, yeah, I don't know what that um, has to do. If, with if anything. you live in Los Angeles like he does, it may seem like it's overcrowded. But you know, I just drive to the store here in Florida, and I see nothing but empty green fields. Oh, the, yeah. the world is not overcrowded. No. It's not crowded uh, at all. Uh, and there's room for a lot more people. Well, maybe if they stop bringing in all these illegals, the country won't seem so crowded. Exactly. And we can exactly. make room for actual b- children that are but legally born. I, I will tell you, um, that clip of his, that's not going to go away. That's It may not become a big story today, but at some point, that 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 statement he made is going to follow him for the rest of his life. That that was really, but do you think he really was- twisted. Directly or indirect. Now that I hear it again, do you think he was directly or indirectly shaming pro-choice people? No, I because no. he was basically saying, if you're pro-choice, no, then you agree with that position too. He, he's um, right. He lives in a very, very crowded place, and uh, and it's it's crowded where he's at because it's a very sought after demand place to live. You know, the, even even the mansions are on top of each other, hanging off of cliffs off the coast of California. And uh, he he thinks that the world's overcrowded. There's too many people. And he's also like a liberal, looks down at people that aren't up to his level economically and well, thinks here, that people that man, are poor are better off dead and never being born. He's a classic Peter Pan. Never grew up. He's never been married. He has no children. Like Pierce said, he probably hates children. He probably can't stand when he goes to his friends' homes and they have children running around, it probably absolutely drives him nuts. He's a, he's a different kind of guy. He's not a traditional kind of guy. He yeah. lives a very selfish existence, and mm-hmm. at least he admits it, and he owns up to it. He's yeah. like, look, I don't ever want to get married. I don't want to have kids. At least he admits it, and he thinks marriage is stupid and all this stuff. That's yeah. his right to think mm-hmm. that way. But I have never heard a liberal ever, and he's a self-proclaimed liberal, even though I have my doubts. Um, ever admit that abortion is murder. Mm-mm. And I'm I'm glad he said what he said. I'm appalled that he's okay with it, but I'm glad that he admitted the truth. Yeah. Now, um, there's a clip of Biden from when he was running against Trump saying that, you know, if Trump gets reelected that, you know, there'll be war with Iran oh, yeah. and it's happening. Good. And that's circulating a lot. And I'm going to play it now. But what he says isn't really what got my attention. It's how with it he is. You know, this clip is from 2020 when he was running. He came out of the basement and did an interview with someone on television. And he sounds like a young man who's with it. And you really see how far Biden has declined in the last couple of years. Let me play the clip. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is there's a lot at stake in this election. Okay. Now, that's not energy from being coked up. I mean, that's a man who and, – and if you remember back in 2020, we thought he was out of it. And this is what he was like when, you know, he was like in his 50s and 60s and he was in the Senate. He's declined so much and that really – that clip just really is insane. Now, you know, yesterday with this attack from Iran, which, again, we are funding, Biden is funding, Obama is funding. They've been funding it since Obama was president. We're paying for the whole thing. Um, you know, uh, you, you saw a story last night online that after the attack happened, which, by the way, it caught, it caught the United States off guard, even though there was a warning that there, it's coming, it's coming. When the attack actually happened on Israel, it seemed like the U.S. government had no idea of that it was I'm going sure they that it was going to happen at that moment, which they should have known. So a complete intelligence failure. But you saw this story that uh, said that Biden was trying to call the Iranians up and they wouldn't take his call. Yeah, somebody put that uh, 
I think it was Jack Posobiec or Jack somebody, Posobiec, I think or it, somebody yeah. in the know uh, said that, and I believe That's crazy. It. And uh, remember, he did a press conference not that long ago, and they said, what do you say to Iran uh, if they want to attack Israel? And he said, don't. He said the same thing to Putin about two years ago about attacking the Ukraine. Don't, don't. What does that mean? Like, that nobody's afraid don't of this do guy. It. Don't do because it. Because he's not going to do anything about it. it. You know what I mean? Trump, when he was in office and he's talked about it, <clears throat> he actually threatened people and, to, and, and, and told them, if you do this, then we're going to do this. And they believed him because you know what? He meant what he said. When Biden says, don't do it, Nobody cares, and nobody, but nobody's afraid of this guy. And this is there's the, no there's no American power right now. This is the third war that Biden started, right? Russia, Ukraine, Israel, and Hamas, and now Israel and Iran. That we are funding. Yeah, we are not only we're funding we are the, paying for this, and we're we're funding both sides. In How these can wars. you be okay with this? I yeah. don't understand. And remember that when I don't Tr- understand when Trump was in office, not only did Trump not start any wars. He was the first president since the end of the Second World War not to start a new conflict. Brian, they had the and Abraham. He ended wars. Remember, they had the Abraham Accords. Yeah. And they call it the Abraham because all those religions come from Abraham. The Christian, the Jewish, and the Muslim all come from Abraham in the Bible. And that's why they were called the Abraham Accords because we all come from the same father mm-hmm. of, of that, you know, Abraham had two children Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac went off and was with the Jewish religion, which then had Christians come out of that. And then you had uh, the Muslims Mm -hmm. from uh, uh, Ishmael, I think. And uh, so it's the Abraham Accords because all those three religions started with Abraham. Well, with with those, with we had that going. What on, that was about? This. It was about a lot of things, but one of the things it was is some some of these countries never recognized Israel as a country, and Trump got them to recognize Israel as a sovereign state for the first time, and that's a pretty big deal. And then the uh, world is a mess, and and, and, and I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, and I think we all did. And then uh, on Saturday night, President Trump had a rally in Pennsylvania. Forty two thousand people showed up. Forty two thousand. Oh my 000. goodness gracious! And and I want you guys th- think about that. That was the outdoor rally last mm-hmm. night. Yeah, forty two thousand. That's incredible. And you know he does that every time. the The number of people that show up for this guy, and they've been doing it since twenty fifteen. Nine years he's been doing rallies is a, is a phenomenal. There's never been anything like this. So don't let the media convince you that he's not popular. Now this um, – Whatever the media says, the opposite is yeah. true. Now this Skanky Daniels judge, who's the most corrupt judge I've ever known, the daughter got the $10 million from Biden and Adam Schiff's campaigns. Um, this tr- The jury selection is starting this week. New York law requires Trump – to be in the courtroom throughout the entire proceeding. Mm. Uh, the judge's schedule has them with a day off on Wednesdays. And, you, you know, we're talking about a presidential campaign. He's got to be in New York, New York in this courtroom with this skanky Daniels story. And don't, you know, they're going to bring up that other woman, the Playboy model. Mm. And she said McDougal. that she, McDougal, that she had enough. Trump says he did not. You know, listen. I understand that the Playboy model. I've seen her on, what does she on have television. To do with this, so she's very pretty. that she um she got paid by the National Enquirer, and they're oh. they're alleging that Trump paid her through the Enquirer, which I I don't believe any of this because Trump says it's not true. Now, the uh, Playboy model. I know she's pretty. She she looks classy, mm-hmm. right? Because she's playboy. She looks classy. She's she's well spoken and articulate. Although I haven't seen her on TV in a few years, so I don't know how she's aged since the last four years or so since I've seen her. But just because she's well spoken and articulate doesn't mean she's any different than Stormy Daniels. Playboy models are the same as porn stars and strippers. They're just at the upper level of it. Well, at okay? least they used to be. I don't know about yeah. it anymore. So so don't don't believe just be, because she seems more articulate or she's more attractive than Stormy Daniels. Uh, Trump says it's not true in either instance, and I I see no reason not to believe Trump. But but this crooked judge in this case to keep Trump in a courtroom during a presidential campaign is at the height of interference uh, politi- yeah, and, and, and political corruption. I mean, these judges, it's hard to say which one of them has committed the most crimes. I would say the Stormy Daniels judge, because the daughter's $10 million from the Biden campaign and from the Adam Schiff campaign, 
That alone is enough for him to recuse himself, and he doesn't because there's corruption there with the money. Come on, let's face it. Now, listen, we're going to take our last break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will be back after this break. Are you in need of a little encouragement? Are you searching for a spark of intrigue? Could you use a good laugh? Then check out Genesis-Revelation.life. Genesis-Revelation.life is your go-to destination for unique and heartfelt designs that resonate with your spirit. Picture this. Thousands of meticulously crafted items, each one with a personal touch. From the whimsical to the profound, the designs at Genesis-Revelation.life cover a wide spectrum, ensuring there's something for everyone. Whether you're drawn to the warmth of Scripture, or prefer non-scripture items, they've got you covered. T-shirts, leggings, totes, headbands, crossbody bags, blankets, journals, napkins, aprons, coasters, drinkware, and that's just the beginning. But what sets Genesis-Revelation.life apart from the rest is simple. A sprinkle of humor, a dash of intrigue, and a layer of comfort. Each design tells a story, seeking to connect with you on a deeper level. In a world that often feels impersonal, Genesis-Revelation.life stands out as a place where every item is designed with heart and soul. Tell your story with these unique designs. Shop now and let your spirit shine. And make sure to share the store on all your social media so your friends can discover Genesis-Revelation.life too. Genesis-Revelation.life where every design is a connection waiting to happen. Start shopping right now. Genesis-Revelation.life Did you know that sleep has the power to make or break your entire life? If you have difficulty sleeping, you're not alone. 70 million Americans struggle with some form of sleep disorder. But there is help available in the book from author Kamal Mystery, Mind Over Mattress, Mastering the Art of Sleep for Mental Clarity and Vitality, available on Amazon. Mind Over Mattress uncovers the science of sleep and its profound impact on mental health. With this must-read and life-changing book, you'll discover evidence-based strategies to to enhance your sleep quality and revitalize your days. You'll learn the connection between mindset, stress, and sleep quality, as well as explore the benefits of mindfulness practices for quieting the mind and easing into a restful night's sleep. Take back your nights and empower your days by ordering your copy of Mind Over Mattress, Mastering the Art of Sleep for Mental Clarity and Vitality from author Kamal Mystery, available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. This book is also a great gift for the person in your life who is having trouble sleeping. Mind Over Mattress, Mastering the Art of Sleep for Mental Clarity and Vitality on Amazon. Have you dreamed of transforming your old, outdated kitchen into a modern and vibrant one? You can do just that with Cabinet Makeover Pro, located in Miami. And don't worry about a huge price tag for new kitchen cabinets, because Cabinet Makeover Pro specializes in refacing your existing cabinets. They'll bring new life to your kitchen without breaking the bank. The results? A stunning transformation that will make your kitchen look brand new. Cabinet Makeover Pro are experts in breathing new life into your space. Their focus is on renovating and enhancing existing cabinets, in kitchens, bathrooms, or any area in need of a facelift. They do everything, too, from painting and changing hardware to new doors and handles. They'll give those old cabinets a modern and functional appearance. Cabinet Makeover Pro is committed to quality, attention to detail, and tailoring solutions to your specific needs. Visit their website, CabinetMakeoverPro.com. View their before and after photos. You will be impressed. Ready to transform your kitchen? Schedule your free consultation right now at CabinetMakeoverPro.com or call them directly 786-805-3531 786-805-3531 you can also follow them on instagram at cabinet makeover pro cabinet makeover pro experienced licensed insured and turning dreams into stunning kitchen realities cabinet makeover pro.com Cherish the memories of your loved ones with a resting place crafted with care and compassion with the Vermont Urn Company on Etsy.com. Everything at the Vermont Urn Company on Etsy.com is handcrafted by an artisan with over 35 years of experience in the casket and urn industry. They're family-owned and proudly local, ensuring your experience is both personal and meaningful. When you visit the Vermont Urn Company on Etsy, you'll find a wide range of urns that reflect your loved one's life and interest. For military and nature themes, 
needs to birds, religious, nautical, public service, patriotic, and more. Each piece is handcrafted with care, customizable, and made right here in the United States. Use the promo code RADIO at checkout and save 10% off your purchase. Preserve the memories that matter most. Visit the shop right now on Etsy at Etsy.com slash shop slash the Vermont Earn Co. That's Etsy.com slash shop slash the Vermont Earn Co. The Vermont Earn Company, where every urn is a symbol of love, respect, and lasting memories. Etsy.com slash shop slash the Vermont Earn Co. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. So today, uh, you know, Sununu, Governor Sununu, that was working with Nikki Haley for a year to try to, you know, make Nikki Haley the Republican nominee. He's supporting Trump now. He's come out and supporting Trump openly. And Stephanopoulos had him on and was ripping him for a support of Trump. And I'm not going to play you any of that exchange, but it's it's total fake thing here. Sununu's trying to get back in with the MAGA movement because Trump's going to win, okay? Exactly. And Well, and he's worried about his own political future, obviously. There, he has none because yeah. he's a never-Trumper, well, yeah, okay? That's what he figured. And he was born into this. He's with the Bushes, and, you know, his dad worked for right. Bush 1. His dad was also governor, too. So, you know, he's one of these people like George W. Bush and Jeb and Liz Cheney that it, they're like noblemen. He's inherited. It's like the, a legacy yeah, politician. Exactly. He's inherited. The Cuomo's. The so he'll always have some, but but Sununu's move back to try to endorse Trump and all this nonsense is just another Bush tactic to get in, in into Trump's circle. And I I was talking in the first segment. I meant to mention this in the first segment when I was talking about comments people leave on YouTube. I I do look over the comments that you guys leave on YouTube, even if I don't respond. I can't respond to all of them, but uh, sometimes I'll leave a heart. A lot of times I do actually respond. You know. But even if I haven't left a heart or responded, I've probably read it, okay, you, if you leave me a YouTube comment. Even the critical ones, which are fine with me. That's cool. So uh, one comment I'm getting from a lot of people on the uh, video I did when I went and voted for Trump in the primary and the poll worker was trying to run me off because I've you know, i been Trump gear and stuff. If you haven't watched that video, you should go and watch it. Um, but a lot of people are commenting that because when I went into in the Florida primary, by the time we had the Florida primary, everyone running against Trump in the primary had dropped out. Everyone. There was no one left, but they were all still on the ballot. Right. And I and I was talking about it and I said, all these losers are on the ballot. And uh, I named off a couple in particular, including our governor, Ron DeSantis, because we're in Florida. And um A lot of people have been leaving comments on that video. You should not call DeSantis a loser. DeSantis is not a loser and all. He's done great things for Florida. Um, DeSantis is a never Trumper, just like Sununu. He's in with the Bushes. If you go and get uh, Ron DeSantis's autobiography, okay, because I got this. I threw it away in the garbage can at the gas station because he pissed me off so much. But I got the biography. He talks about he was uh, DeSantis was captain of the Yale baseball team. Bush 41, when he went to Yale, was the captain of the Yale baseball team. And Bush, President Bush 41 came to Yale and he visited the baseball team. He met Ron DeSantis. They took him under his wing because of the Harvard baseball team captain thing. And he's a Bushy. He's a never Trumper. He has done some good recently. He's done two things that are very good as governor. He passed this very strict law against these bums that move into people's homes, these, you know, and and say it's theirs and they don't pay rent and every every everything else, right? That's a big thing. Squatters, this anti-squatting law. He did a thing uh also, he just um signed uh, an executive order cutting our to- uh, in Florida we have a we have a turnpike, the Florida Turnpike. Ronald Reagan turned. He, he, if you drive it, if you go through toll plazas a certain number of times per month, your tolls are cut by forty percent. 
with this yeah. new executive order. And I drive the turnpike every day, and I so it's enough for me to do it. So we cut my turnpike tolls by 40%. Those are good things. But just because he's done good things doesn't change the fact that Ron DeSantis, like Sununu, are never Trumpers. And I'm, I'm very grateful for these things that he does. Hopefully he'll do some more in his final you know, three years here as governor, two and a half years. But I, you can't trust these people. No. Didn't he just have a fundraiser for Trump or did I read? He said that he is going to have a fundraiser for Trump. Give me a break. Trump doesn't need his money. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't want that to say. Exactly. And you, you can't trust these people. They're do- Trump can have his own fundraisers. He just had one and raised $50 million in a 50 night. Point, 50 and a half. Yeah. Point he doesn't five need DeSantis's million. measly scraps. Exactly. So a, a lot of these people, DeSantis, Sununu, and there'll be others that are, are top, Never Trumpers working with the Bushes are trying to get back in the the, the fold. And that's some of them, some of them may. And when Trump brings people in, that's fine. Like he brought Mike Johnson to Mar a Lago. They had a great press conference on Friday. That's fine. Mike Johnson's okay now because Trump says he's okay. Well, there's a bit of an issue with him and MTG and Trump and Marjorie Taylor Green. So yeah. Jack Posobiec tweeted yesterday, and you and I talked about this a little bit, but that there's a lot of talk. And this is a name we really haven't discussed for VP of Marco Rubio. Oh, yeah, I saw that. As Trump's VP. Um, again, you said that he's a Florida guy, so they keep bringing up Florida names, and you always say that can't they can't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm wondering if that law changed or if there's a way around it, because mm-hmm. I'm sure if that is a law, Trump is aware of it, that they can't get the electoral votes. Mm-hmm. But dis- mm-hmm. despite that, how do you feel about Rubio? Being uh, the VP Rubio is different. I, I like Rubio in the first campaign was running against Trump. OK, he has totally cleaned up his act. He was with Trump the entire first term doing everything right. He votes the right uh, way. I'll I've tell you that he votes the right when, way. When he was running for reelection in the Senate, I interviewed Marco Rubio on the podcast yeah. here. And by the way, Marco Rubio's people contacted me and asked if I wanted to interview yeah. Marco Rubio. I didn't call and ask that, which was a, that's, that's crazy. I was, I was, you know, that was nice, but he's with Trump. I have I, Marco Rubio. I got no problems with. So you always say like the VP is not important, but in this instance, I disagree. I think it's very important who the vice president is. And I think Trump needs to pick somebody who will win. And when he's done, because he's yeah. only serving four years and that goes by quickly and you don't it want sure him. Will to be out of office and then some liberal lunatic come in and reverse everything. Mm-hmm. And then we're back where we were. Yeah. You want things that are going to stay in place and put the country on the right path permanently. Mm-hmm. And you need like eight to 12 years for that to happen, to yeah. really change things. So mm-hmm. I like Marco Rubio. Um, I also like Greg Abbott and Christy Nome. Those are my three. Marco Rubio is good because he's a seasoned politician. He ran for president himself. He has changed a lot. I I think that that running for president was a very humbling and maturing experience for Marco Rubio because I have noticed a change in him. He always votes the right way, and he is in Miami, and Miami is very red, and he is in with the Cuban community, and they love Trump. So believe me, he has his pulse on the situation of what people want and and what they want to see happen with the country. So I think that would be a good ticket. I don't know about this Florida thing with the residency, whatever, despite that, I think that would be a winning ticket. There's not too many people he can have as VP that I can see becoming president. Marco Rubio, I can see becoming president someday. He really has matured. He's likable and he's very polished and in a good sense, he's experienced. And when he talks lately, he's very, authoritative and on board with Trump. And, and he's not one of these guys that you see on TV too much anymore because I think he's really dedicated to the people of Florida. And he really like, he's like Rick Scott, Rick Mm -hmm. Scott's another one that would be great. The two of them are both fantastic senators. So I'd like to know what you guys think about that. If, if, if what Jack Posobiec says is true, that there's a lot of chatter about him being the VP it better not be Tim Scott, and I don't think it will be. I, I think that would be a huge mistake. I think you're right. Trump just said that because the, of the um, South Carolina South Carolina vote. But um, 
that he might have a position on the cabinet like Ben Carson or something, mm-hmm. but he would be a horrible person because he would never win the presidency. He's yeah. awful yeah. when he speaks. He gets weird. He's He just he, gets weird. Yeah, he's like Arsenio Hall in Coming to America when he's the preacher. That's exactly yeah. what Very he's strange. like. Very strange. Um, he starts talking he's weird like a faith and healer. moving around. Yeah, yeah he's a, like Benny Hinn mm. almost. He, yeah, he's like a healer, and he, he gets into this preacher mode, which I don't know why some people do that, but I think he would be a horrible pick because I don't think he could win. I think he needs to really choose somebody that can mm-hmm. legitimately carry the torch and win and seamlessly transition into another eight years of somebody. It's not going to be Ron DeSantis. I, I like, I like but, you know, um, he could pick Marco him. Rubio. I like Marco Rubio. He could pick DeSantis. Who? No Tr- way. Brian, Trump does crazy things sometimes no. and he makes no choices way. that I don't always understand. No way. And he might think that he's got to pick somebody who's the best who he thinks He'll is ne- going to win you can't the trust that guy. Well, I agree yeah. with you, but, you know. Yeah. Now, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, everyone. And remember, if you're a Patreon supporter, go to the Patreon page. Kathy and I post things up there all the time uh, t- that uh, is exclusive to Patreon supporters. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now – are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K-Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, George and Brandon. Those are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you all. Now, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode, guys. Okay? So just click that link. It depends on the platform. You might have to copy and paste it, but the link's in the episode on all of our platforms. Now, um, this, uh, I, some people, I know Trump has said that if if I was in office right now, this thing in Iran, uh, the way Trump reacts this week may seem a little more mild than you would normally expect. If there's a military action going on, Trump has to be a little careful what he says because right. they'll start if, – if something goes wrong, they'll blame Trump. OK, Trump said this, so Iran did that. Plus it's best for him to step back and let Biden – Stand out and see what a disaster he is. Oh yeah, like Kirby. That's that. that it's Kirby. important to step back and let people see what's really exactly. Going on. Kirby was on the Sunday shows. Not he, be looked, a he looked like a dope. Yeah, Kirby, exactly. uh, Today, these people are a complete disaster. Yeah, and let him let him show it. Don't get in the way. Let it, stand exactly. back and let them do it. Exactly. And the more that the media push for the media want Trump to come in on the this illegal, god awful attack by Iran on Israel. Because they want people to be looking at Trump, not the incompetence of the Biden-Obama regime. Well, the whole thing with the abortion in the Arizona Supreme Court just totally dropped off the, the oh, news that's cycle. Gone. That's over. Because of this, this is obviously more pressing and more important. Absolutely. And I think this is why Fetterman has been red-pilled. He's very become very conservative. A lot of people think in the left that he's brain-damaged and that's made him. Well, you know, it'll be interesting. It's a long time off. But when Fetterman runs for re-election, all these kind of conservative things that he's been saying mm-hmm. – you know, it, 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 they may not support him, the Democrats, when he runs for re-election if he continues this way. Now, listen, everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will talk to you next time.